Hey guys, my name is Oranges and welcome to Ira or Ira. I'm pretty sure it's Ira, as in like the name Ira. But let's go. Begin. Please note the current Ira demo contains pre-alpha gameplay. Ooh. The smell of rocket fuel hangs in the air, even this far outside of town. The year is 1932, and summer fades over the land surrounding pilgrimage as launch day fast approaches. Anticipation fills the air, and the world's gaze is drawn to the tiny town as the final trains make their way into the station. Oh, it's so cute. That's a small little train. Cool. Hey, is this us? Playing a banjo, banjo player. Well, looks like it'll just be me and you riding the rest of this line, pal. Oh, that's okay. No, I'll be offing off to the next stop. I suppose. I'm not sticking around here. Why? What's the next town? Next up the line is Pilgrimage, the last town for 50 miles. Types like you and me ought to be steering clearer there about now. I guess so. Too much motion. Uh, what's wrong with Pilgrimage? Well, you're not just fine any work there, that's for sure. Not unless you plan on hauling it up to Mars. Intel co-owns that town between the miners head for Mars and the hollow scene. It doesn't seem like the kind of place I'd like to get caught up. That last ride out to Mars leaves soon. Some miners are crawling all over that town. Oh, that must be them there. That's the miners. I know work's scarce, but damn. To be desperate enough to sell your soul to Intel Co. and go mine in the red sand. Poor masters. His accent changes all the damn time. Nobody will ever notice them, though. Everybody, everybody's, everybody's got their eyes on the hot scene. All those rich folks headed in the town for the launch day. Intel Co. will be sure to keep tabs like us out of the way. Look at them sipping all on champagne. It's all just profit for Intel Co. They don't care who has to suffer to make a buck. Back to us. Aw. So we're the big, big, burly red dude. Alright. Pilgrimage, gateway to the stars. Gateway to nothing, if you ask me. The whole thing's a sham. Folks there, as poor as anything else, it's all a show. If you're living in that town, then the Intel code good as owns you. Nope, there's nothing us for us there in Pilgrimage. That town is a dead end. Okay. Well, you are optimistic as heck. So, thank you. Still miles from town, a tiny farmhouse sits alone amongst the fields. A place a young boy named Ira calls home. Dad. Oh, Ira, hi there. I didn't hear you come in. <gasps> we must be Ira. I'm just finishing up the car here. Did you need something? Mom told me to come out and ask if you need anything. Ah, here we go. Oh, thank you, Ira. Sure, I could always use an extra hand. I'm just trying to get the car back up and running before I run out of time here. Before I leave, I mean. I can't leave you and your mother here all winter with the car breaking down every couple miles. When are you going? Well, I guess it's almost exactly a week away now. That Holocene launch pl pushed up our date. They're trying to get all the miners out before the press show up. They don't want us hanging around and spoiling the big departure. A new star, a new day. A lot of fuss about something that's not going to do any good for anybody, if you ask me. I know you're interested in all the Holocene stuff, Ira. Sorry. I just don't really understand the point. At least the car will be in good shape before I go. Could you bring me that wrench from above the workbench? This is cool. Oh, he's so slow, though. But that's all right. Is that a chicken? Chicken wing? Oh, look at his face. It's so cute. Here you go, Pops. How about you to wrench, Pa? Here you go. Oh, look at that. Look. And they gingerly touch tips of the fingers. I don't know what that said. I want to see his face. All right, now, I just need f a fuel line to replace this one here. I think there's one out in the barn. Could you run out and see if you can find it? Yes, Papa. I will do that for you. All right, so we're going to go outside. The night air was crisp, a cool wind moving in from the north, catching up on the last summer's warmth. 
So we need to go to the barn. Oh, he runs. This is cool. Yeah, that's the barn. Let's go find a fuel line for Papa. The darkness in the barn is thick, but moonbeams through the cracks give just enough light to illuminate a few boxes tucked in the corner. Something shifts in the upper loft, but it is out of view and concealed by shadows. Let's climb up to the loft. Something's up there. Somebody's hiding. Ira climbs the sheer ladder to the upper loft and peers over its edge. The moon lightly light. The moonlight quickly falls off to the blackness, and nothing can be made out. Search aloft. Ira steps into the silent darkness, but even from this closer vantage, nothing can be seen. Memory tells him he must be near the far wall, but the feeling is that of standing in an abyss. Feel around. We're going to search, and we're probably going to get tetanus. Ira's hands meet them with a metal surface, smooth and cold. The object is large, taller than he can reach, far too wide to put his arms around. It is sturdy and finely crafted, unlike anything else on the farm, or that Ira has ever experienced. Ira's hands continue to probe the object, and he makes contact with glass, like a small window looking from this strange vessel. He lays his palm upon the glass, and startling feeling of nearness to another person falls over Ira. He recoils at the sensation. All of this seemingly impossible, but in this darkness, reason has little place. Ira makes his way back down the ladder, unsure of what he had found, and his fear subsided as he distanced himself from the device. Let's call up. Oh my. Ira's voice is swallowed up by the darkness. There's no response. Let's just search some boxes then. Let's find that fuel line and go back to Papa. Mice scurry out as Ira feels around in the boxes. He tosses aside old oil-soaked rags and his fingers quickly find the soft rubber hose. Ira tugs firmly, but it is lodged between some rusted bits of junk and won't come free. He pulls again, harder this time, but the hose is lodged tightly. With one final heave, the hose comes free and knocks the box to the ground and sends its contents bouncing into the darkness. Ira's fist... Clo tightly closed around the hose, his hands fly upwards with force, bumping an old radio concealed by the shadows on the wall, jostling it to life. That startled me a little bit. Ira looked looks around the darkness of the barn and is overcome with a feeling of unwelcomeness. He hurries out the door, hose in hand. Someone's in my barn, something. I think it's an alien. We're talking about going to Mars? There's, there's a Martian. There's a Dad's hiding a Martian. Mm-hmm. That's why he sent me there. He's probably like, son, you are a man now, and you must see what a Martian really looks like. That's what he does. I bet that's what it is. Actually, I don't know. I am probably... Oh, no! Dad, what's happened? I got the hose for you, Papa. Pop, pop. Ah, this damn thing. What? Oh, the hose, right. Hang on a second. The damn threads are stripped again. Cheap Intel Co. trash. They make this garbage that lasts about a month, I swear. Biggest company in the world, so the bastards think they can do whatever the hell they want. This remind. Oh my god. They. They send us off to sweat and bleed on Mars for next to nothing. If it wasn't for the Union. That looks like, uh, Red Faction. Bad as things are now, before the Union, we'd have. A death every day. Still, most of us can barely afford to buy gear that isn't about to fall apart. Can you believe that? We mine for them up on that godforsaken planet, and we have to buy our own gear. That is pretty shitty. It's a miracle we don't all die up there, but still, a lot of us do. Those must be his buds, his mining buds. A lot of good men don't come back. There are too many window widows in this town because of that damn company. Son of a bitch! This is all gone to hell now. It's not so bad. At least you're working. Mom's getting sicker. Not so bad? Yeah, I'm one lucky son of a bitch, Ira. I get to go spend half a year up mining in the red sand, just lucky as all hell. Dad, don't take it out on me. I'm... I'm sorry, Ira. I didn't mean to say any of that. I'm just... Why don't you head in? Your mother might need a hand with dinner. 
And I think they're doing a special about the Holocene tonight on TV. You don't want to miss that, right? Go on inside, Ira. I just need to spend some more time out here getting this back together. I didn't mean to upset you. No, it's not that, Ira. It's not you at all. It's just everything else. I love you, son. I'll see you inside in a bit, okay? Ira? Oh, I didn't know you were asleep. That's all right, Ira. Not quite sleeping, just tired. I was going to watch that special on the Holocene with you, remember? I just... Give me a few minutes. I need to wake myself up. Is everything okay? Of course, everything is fine, Ira. It's just been a hard week, with your father getting ready to leave and all. It's nothing for you to worry about. Why don't you go watch your special? You can tell us all about it at dinner. Oh, I never did start co dinner cooking. Could you go and do that for me? All you have to do is put the pot on the stove. Everything is made. After you do that, you can go and get your father so we can all eat. Alright. I'll put dinner on and then go get dad. That would be lovely. Thank you, Ira. I'll see you out there soon. I love you. This game is already making me sad and we just started it. What? The sound of water floods the senses, washing away an old reality, leaving behind only the shell of Ira's former life. Memories ring out like echoes fading in a slow procession of years gone by. The past decays and the future remains unseen, time pressing forward blindly, un unaware of its mortal passengers. The flow of hours turning into decades carries Ira down its twisting streams. There goes Dad. Off to the Martian waste. It carries his father to distant Martian mines. It, sweep, sweeps, up, it sweeps up his mother, his home, and his bearing. What is going on? Is that a tombstone? <gasps> That's a tombstone. And it carries Ira to places he has never known. Ira feels... Ira finds what feels like stability, washing ashore on the rigidness of a moment, lost and alone. But a voice rises from within. It draws him back into the house like a sign of hope through the murkiness of this reality. Oh my gosh. The call grows louder, guiding Ira through this tomb of a home. Oh my god, this is sad. <gasps> go upstairs. Let's go upstairs. The inner voice is clear now. It draws Ira up the stairs, promising escape. A familiar feeling comes with the attic's stale air, but it is fleeting. Whoa, this is a cool attic. <gasps> I want a place like this. Holocene bombs. A distant voice rises through the radio static. It's toned familiar, but the words too muffled to make out. The sound is barely audible, but I refines comfort in the noise beneath the static. Closing his eyes, Ira focuses on the voice. Words reveal themselves. How can we know where we have been? Only by looking backwards. It is where we have all come from. That much is true. But knowing what has been is not knowing at all. Do you know where you will be? Nothing is certain. No way set. Your perspective is flawed, but you must know that. You wouldn't have come otherwise. You couldn't have come. What are you telling me? Do you know where you are? Of course. You couldn't know, could you? Not in this way. Wake up. Whoa. Stonehenge. 
in space. What is this? A teleporter will take me to distant lands. We're gonna fade away again? Ira's mind slips through the years, escaping time, caught up in the void. <gasps> Cryostasis, perchance. But the mind reemerges, called back into the slow march of time after years of suspension. His name should be Fry, not Ira. Wow. Ira's head throbs with pain. He can barely focus on a single thought. The room is familiar, but it is a distant memory. His mind is unable to recall why he knows the place or when he has been here. Central Terminal. We went from a barn and just this broken down house to this. Computer, initializing power up sequence. Errors 29323402 detected. Attempting bypass of faulty systems. Method failed. Please contact administrator. The elevator's power returns a crack of the switch. Returns a crack of switch from above. Life returning to the terminal's dusty speaker. A voice emerges through the static. Mm -hmm. These rats again, destroying my ship wire by wire. Back, vermin! Flee from my... From my... The sound of my voice. From the sound of my voice. I just repaired this unit, you miserable rodents. Although this is the first time the rats have powered up all systems. That is fascinating. Computer log! Record event on arrival to the lithic system. Plus, 1,082. Rats have transitioned from wire chewing to attempts at utilizing ship systems. Motivation unknown. Um. Where am I? What's happening? Is there someone down there? You're not a rat at all. The ship's logs show that all the stasis pods gave out ages ago. It is a miracle the crew is not dead. Please excuse my informality. Allow me to introduce myself. This is your acting captain, assumed commander of the Holocene II, the master of this vessel. It's good to, you, to have you in my service. It's good to have anyone in my service, actually. We're on a ship? Of course we're on a ship. You're aboard the Holocene II, crewman. This seems to be obvious information. Your mental state may be worse than I expected. How would you describe your current condition? I'm fine. Can you help me get out of here or not? I feel like I've been hit by a truck. It did say we have a headache. I don't have any records on the sensation of being hit by a truck. But it's good that you are holding on to memories of Earth. Nostalgia is a powerful antipsychotic. We'll keep a close monitor on your status. Please feel free to report any feelings of nausea, increased heart rate, hallucinations, or sensation of death. Given our situation, I'm clearing you for duty. Congratulations. You'll have some catching up to do, especially after the incident, but I'm sure you'll rise to the occasion. What incident? Ah, yes. Day one of arrival to the lithic system. The system's automated systems... The ship's automated systems were compromised. The system is flooded with electromagnetic interference, which wreaked havoc on the electrical grid. By the time I assumed the role of captain, the stasis chambers had succumbed to the surge. But the ship was saved! I took control of navigation manually just in time, too. Our mission shall continue, though we may be delayed by the inconvenient mass loss of life among the crew. But you're here now. You are undoubtedly in a state of great confusion. Allow me to reacquaint you with the Holocene 2. This is intense. As you can see, stasis pods will not be in short supply. Yeah, I'll say. They're all fucking dead. Though their occupants will need removal. I can't imagine that will be a pleasant task. At least we'll be making good use of the airlock. Oh! Are we almost there? What's all that shit? That must be where we get our oxygen. Welcome to the greenhouse level where your stress will melt away as you watch the fruits of your labor grow and propagate. Speaking of which, you've been promoted to a head botanist. What with the recent loss of the entire biology department? Congratulations! Don't be intimidated by the state of the place. I trust that you'll be able to get things in good order in no time. I would suggest making a priority, though. Most of the food stores were vented in space four weeks ago. Why? Are you saying that everyone on the ship is dead? Yes! This reminds me of Red Dwarf. Moving along. Holy crap. 
How did we get here? Science! Welcome to the labor laboratory level. Welcome to the laboratory level. This is a research vessel, after all. State-of-the-art equipment should make light work of uncovering the many secrets of the lithic system. I can't seem to locate your scientific background in your file. But no matter. Take some time to familiarize yourself with the lab. Make yourself comfortable, and you should be ready to assume the position of head researcher. Again, congratulations. Though I really must insist that you don't touch the particle accelerator before reading the manual. Even then, please don't touch the particle accelerator. Why are you showing me this? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about taking it all in at once. I have several volumes of system manuals somewhere. You'll get there eventually. To the next level! Who is this? This is a computer. Has to be. Everyone's dead. They're all dead, Dave. Ah, my pride and joy, the heart of my ship, the engine's core. At my disposal here is the power to bridge the stars, to travel vast distances at great speed, to conquer the expanses. The power would corrupt the mind of a lesser captain. But I assure you, you're in good hands. Just look at it. Take its awe-striking potential. This is actually several pay grades above your clearance level. Why am I allowing you to see this? As your captain, I order you to erase your memories of this place. Do you even know what you're saying? Of course! Our journey is nearing its end. You're about to enter the upper deck of the Holocene 2. Alright, let's do it. Oh my. This is the 182nd day in orbit of Hermes on the outer rim of the Lithic system. This is our designated rendezvous point with the crew of the Holocene. Protocol dictates we await docking instructions from the crew on the surface, which has yet to arrive. Am I the only one alive on this ship? Well, in a matter of speaking, yes. I'm not per se alive, but I am still your captain. I expect to be treated as such. What I am is the Z-120. Automated control system for the Holocene 2. That's quite thing. So you're just a computer. You're not the captain. You're not even a person. You're just a computer. Well, yes, that is true. But I'm fully capable of fulfilling my duties despite my limited physical form. Besides, crewman, with you here, the manifest has doubled. <laughs> now our mission is sure to succeed. Okay. Where should I go? That's what I want to know. Uh, oh, obviously not. Oh, here we go. Bridge interface. Boop. Let's do it. Press it up. I realize you're curious, but please try not to break anything. I got you. Loading console systems. Communications. In the static, a sound emerges, a sound that will still that was still ringing in the back of his mind. It flows through Ivor's body. That interference has been flooding all of the standard radio channels since we arrived. It has made maintaining ship's controls something of a challenge. The worst part has been maintaining a stable orbit. Our sensors required radical adjustments just to make any sense of the navigation readouts. It also may be what killed everyone. Why do I know this sound? There is... Quite impossible. Dreaming cannot occur in stasis. Dreams occur over time. Stasis functions between the principles of subnuclear frequencies. Surely you see the ridiculousness of the notion. The signal is localized to the lithic system, and you only just woke from stasis. You could not feasibly recognize this sound. Perhaps you're not hearing the signal clearly. Allow me to amplify the receiver. You idiot. You're a f and you're the goddamn captain. The interference has caused another power surge. Life support has gone critical. You need to evacuate. The lander craft are through the starboard hatch. There's one lander reading is functional. I should be able to access these doors. Don't waste time. Atmosphere could vent at any moment. Run to hall. I'm accessing the door's controls. Almost there. Come on, ship. There, the door. Run! Wow. Get in. Right there, dude. Holy Toledo's. Space. I'm in space. I'm in space. The system's interference is blocking planetary transmissions. I'm scanning the surface for signs of settlement. We're descending too fast. We need to decrease our speed. Brace for impact. 
So the computer's on our ship now? And he just, like, left the big ship? I guess? I don't know, it's a computer. Is that us coughing? Or, yeah, that's coughing. Wow, our ship is totaled. Are we on an ice planet? <gasps> That's a radio beacon. We're on Hoth. Act 1, Pilgrimage. Join us on Kickstarter. Wow! That was cool! That was really cool. You guys know that I really like point-and-click adventure games. It, they tell a story. Sometimes they're funny. That computer added a little bit of comedic relief to a very serious story. Was that stuff that we were playing at the very beginning of the game, was that something that was actually happening? Or was it just a weird memory in his head that maybe wasn't actually his? Or was it something from his past? When he was remembering that, or when living it, I don't know. He looked the same as when he was in the spaceship. So I, want, I don't know what's happening there. From the very beginning, they always said that they did the space travel thing. But the landscape itself looked modern to us right with with the barns and the house and the old ass car the old ass car wasn't modern to us it had like a, a fallout type vibe to it with the old car but with space travel you know it's it's very very interesting i'm really looking forward to more of this game ah very cool if you guys want to check that out ira links are going to be in the description I have no words for this. It was really good. I liked it. There's some things, like if the graphics were a little bit more refined. As as somebody who does videos like this, I like when there's no voiceover. But as a, as a game player, I like when there's a little bit of voiceover. But that might also impact the, the mood of the game itself. If they added a voiceover, if it didn't fit. So I, I think this is really good. This is... I like this one. A lot. Hmm... I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, click that like button. If you want to see more content such as this, click that subscribe. And come hang out with me three times a week. It'll be fun. Anyways, guys, my name is Oranges. See you later.